Hey, everybody, I've got something that I've been using now for quite a while. And stay tuned. I'll go look at the next video. I'm going to show you this thing. This is a new inverter. And I'm going to show you something that goes with it. And that's a very old one. So let me show you what I've got here. I bought this originally because I drive a semi truck and I do a lot of work on it. These things are they're not that bad price wise, but they are impressive. Now, I've been using this for a lot and you can tell by the mess here. I even, I even broke the box on it. Not exactly. <laughs> I'm a little rough on stuff. So this thing comes with a just, look at this here, a crap load of wire. So if you're an electrician like my buddy Ronbo, you got to look at something like this. If you install like I do, you really need to look at this. And I put that link below the video to it. Look down there where it comes from. And you can go check out its specs. Now, this one's unique in a way because it has its own power supply that comes off of what you're working with so let's get over here and i don't need to add this but so you can tell you can tell i've been using this i fixed the tail lights on a semi truck and then i had the uh, brake relay we couldn't figure it out and this thing here mind-boggling it was just a rusty bolt and <laughs> wouldn't get no ground but drove us crazy for a half a day and then we get, went home and got this damn thing and it was like five minutes so if you want to save yourself a lot of pain these are handy, and I want to show you what I do with this. Let me get this thing untangled. This is how I put it back in the box. Don't trip. I kind of put it back. I can't get the box to close anymore, so maybe you want to get you one of the Harbor Freight 11-inch bags. That's probably what this is going to go into. So, all right. Now, like anything, here's my big battery bank. Here's my bus bar. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect it here, and then I'm going to connect it over here because I want my power. And I'm going to show you why this is important to have now y'all seen in a previous video how i use this thing and you know what unless you got power going through a freaking circuit that's it's okay but <laughs> it man it don't tell you what this thing's gonna tell you this is mind-boggling so all right i did all this wiring i do a lot of this um, I spent uh, uh, 13 days of y'all wonder, you know, other than that video I uploaded using my, my $17 uh, dollar store phone there. Uh, if you're wondering, I uploaded that video in the middle of the job site, believe it or not, because I had service that video of the car thing, electric car burning. But this here, um, I've had on the job site. And when we install big solar arrays, the first thing you want to do is, am I shorted? Am I shorted? Am I, before you power up, right? Well, this is a handy sucker, right? I just pull up next to it with my truck, and as you can see, um, here, yeah, it's tough as hell, believe it or not. That thing's freaking like built like a brick. So I'm plugging it in my truck. It comes with an extra crap load of cable. I don't know how long this is. It's about 30 feet by, by the time you get it. So it worked great on a semi truck all the way back to the uh, refrigerator unit. So now, um, this is important. So I've done all this wiring, and I want to check. Well, here, let me show you first. This is your what you're going to get here. Okay, so watch this here. Zero voltage, because that's the ground. And then watch over here. 13.1 volts, because that's the positive bus. Now, I'm going to say, I can't tell if that fuse is blown. You see what I mean? And we're going to go in. And boom. It doesn't just give me a little light. It could be a little dim. In other words, a loose DC connection. DC connection, you got to remember, they're based on torque. They're based on tightness. They're not necessarily like a slip fit for a wall socket or something. All right. Now, I install this inverter, and it might have electronic controls, electronic functions. And one of the things you cannot have is you cannot have this inverter. You can't have that chassis grounded. That chassis cannot be grounded. This one here, it's true sine wave. That chassis cannot be grounded. Some of them can be like old modifieds. But watch this. I'm going to go straight to the screw. Nothing. That's fully powered. There's no, there's fuse in it and everything. And you go over here and look at this. This is, this is my test bed. You're going to see it in the next video. Okay. So now another thing is, is do I, when I drove all these screws in, this wall is metal framed. So when I put on here, I put two layers of three-quarter plywood. So there's three-quarter plywood, and then I put another layer, as you can see right here. Well, see that? Oh, there you go. Three-quarter plywood. And I want to make sure that when I shot screws through that I didn't hit a metal spot. 
So when you come to, you know, did I hit a metal spot right here? You see that? No. Did that screw shoot through and hit metal? Now, I know it shouldn't matter on this because it's isolated. But let me show you where it matters like hell. All right. You see that screw right there? Nothing. This screw here? Nothing. Do I really want to go through the screw, shoot the screw all the way through and have ground in that metal back there? Have this stuff in that metal back there and shoot that screw through and be that freaking close in case I reach in here with a wrench and hit that? No, I don't. Do I want it over here where all my wires are coming through in case one of them gets chafed? No, I do not. Okay, and that's an LCD screen, okay? So, uh, and it's not flickering, it's my camera. All right, so when I shoot these right here, you see I use a rubber pad roofing screw. But as you can tell, that washer, it just wants to touch it right there. But did I ground out this thing anywhere? No, I did not. Because the electronics in these... They can go completely haywire, and if you've hooked one of these up and you've bolted it to the chassis, the metal chassis in your vehicle, and you wonder why they're acting crazy, there you go. Um, same thing with this one here. Is, is it grounded? No. Completely isolated, as it should be. Is my circuit down here fine? You see that? And you listen to the beeps. Hear how they're going? Those beeps are telling you that it's a clean circuit, okay? I can also go to different functions where I have AC voltage, my ohm ratings, and my diode, which is like if you want to check, I don't like to do it right now, but if you have rectifiers like I have wind turbines, and hey guys, we're going to be putting up a brand new set of wind turbines, eh, whatever, somewhere up on the roof. New wind turbines here in about a week, okay? Um, I've been gone. I've been working a hell of a lot of hours, but Anything out here, do I have a problem with this fuse right here? I can pop that cover and test it. You cannot see that fuse. You see inside there? You can't tell that sucker's burnt. Now, that's the reason that I use them here, and I use them up here. Same reason. Do I know if that fuse is burned? You see? I can test that fuse just like that when the wire's finished. That is important. Any of these screws, look how close that screw is right there to that positive. A staple could fall in there and cause one hell of a spark. Look at that. Not grounded, not positive, nothing. That, extremely positive. Got it? So, if you want to know, if you made up a circuit correctly, DC voltage, and I think this thing goes like to 100 volts DC. If you want to know if you've done it correctly, this is how you're going to do it. And you're also going to know whether or not you've got a DC ground where you should be having an AC common or AC ground, like this is, okay? That, you want to keep them separate, because what will happen is you'll build up a load of static in these things and kill them. Not a good idea. Uh, the other thing is, if you want to find out which battery lead, um, you can ch check the, uh, the pulse sound. Consistent. You hear that difference? Even in the dark, man, you can tell positive. You hear that? Positive from negative. And look how quick I just switch right back and forth. All right. I'm going to recommend this to my folks. You can test a frame on a solar panel. You understand? You can test the chassis on your car. You can test where your, all your brake lights come together in the back. And you know RV guys, you'll have a horse trailer. It'll be a seven plug and it'll be different than it will be for a... RV plug for a recreational vehicle, for like a motorhome or a travel trailer or whatever. It'll be different. They're not wired the same. But with this, you can literally go back there and energize it. Okay? You can power it. This is powering it. Okay? You can power this thing up and you can test it on your trailers, anything you're working on. And you ain't, <laughs> if you're like me, crawling around 3 o'clock in the morning on that semi, those lights are handy. But this is just beats the hell out of trying to do it otherwise. I'm not, I'm this guy most of the time, but God, I've used this so much. I can't even stand it anymore. But what do y'all think? Y'all like that? Isn't that cool? And by the way, you got guys, that freezer still running, sitting at negative degrees. Look at that baby. And it's just full right now, full of catfish. So stays out here. My wife says catfish, you know, <laughs> but y'all go check this out. This thing is freaking sweet. 
and I have not been able to tear it up. Oh, and speaking of, check this out. Check this out here. I'm over here at the table. That's how long the cord is. Watch this. You pop it out. See the probe? Replaceable. Because uh, I kind of blew one up once. <laughs> and it locks right in to the back. Boom. There you go. Pretty simple. Not too damn shabby. And you go through all these different cycles here. Watch this. Positive. See that? Look at that. Kind of cool. Kind of cool. So you can, you can check for continuity. And you can check for direction. How do you like that? Man, I kind of like this thing. All right. I got an email about a year ago. Somebody wanted to send me one. I screwed up, didn't answer. But I should have. But I paid it, and I got it. And this thing comes in real English. I mean, like, you know. And I guess you can get one in German. But this thing comes. You can read this. You can tell it is not BS. Tells you everything. And it is a TFT color display. So, it, you know, in the sunlight and everything, it works pretty good. So, how you like that? And I don't know. I don't know how long this cord is, but it gives you everything. And oh, yeah, modified sine wave check, all kinds of crap. I can test my uh, resistor. Uh, we use this to test the resistor for our 1975 Dodge air, uh, heater, heater unit. Has a resistor on the dashboard. Work like a freaking dream the resistor was supposed to be a 10 or something it came in as being almost nothing it's kind of fused inside so check that out what do you think this is impressive little tool i thought when i first got it be like ah, it'll go on the shelf <laughs> yeah this freaking stays under the seat of my truck going everywhere all right guys y'all be good check that thing out i really did like every minute i've spent with it except i wish they'd build this better Good hinges and all, but I broke the crap out of these parts and lost parts and, you know, y'all be good. Really cool machine.